Hey folks, welcome back to our Dice Tower preview. I'm Mark, and today we're taking a look at the Shadow Planet. The Shadow Planet is brought to you by Galacta. It's for three to five players, ages 14 and up, and games run about 90 minutes. In a strange and remote region of space, death may not be the worst end. You play as a group of astronauts on a rescue mission. You land on a desolate planet to learn the fate of a long lost scientific vessel. With little over a day to investigate what happened, you discover that the planet itself and the encountered survivors hide horrible secrets that might endanger humanity. The Shadow Planet is a sci-fi game of alien horror based on a beautifully illustrated Italian graphic novel. It perfectly blends the idea of hidden identities and a completely new approach to the deck building genre, thus offering you a unique gaming experience and a chance to use a completely different strategy every time you play. In this game, you will have a secret goal and use six different characters to achieve it. Deceive your rivals and control the flow of the game through the cunning management of different decks. Move around various locations on the planet to gain powerful cards or use special abilities. But remember that they will also benefit your opponents who can acquire the very same deck you're trying to modify. Look for allies and identify the alien threat before it proves too powerful, unless you're the creature trying to leave the planet. Save humanity or save yourself. First, let's take a quick look at this main board. Now, the big thing here is there are six main characters and none of these characters belong to any of the players. You'll potentially play any number of these throughout the game, but they have all their own starting locations and each character has their own deck that you're going to be adding to throughout the game. You're either trying to strengthen these decks or weaken them depending on who you are in the game. Very interesting. Each of the characters also have their own card with a special ability that you'll get to activate and all the different locations on the board have various things you can do. All of it is really meant a way for you to build and bolster those decks or weaken those decks. Now there's ways to travel around the board faster with multiple characters by using the different vehicles and there's different ways to acquire those. But there's decks for each of the areas and that's what you'll be tapping into to augment the character decks. Now there's travel lines, you're going to have to be playing cards to travel between the different locations and on any one turn you're only going to be controlling one character. Now, there are three dials on the board that you'll be manipulating throughout. You've got the threat level, which can end the game if you reach its max, and you've got the repair and the launch, which kind of go hand in hand. Those two dials, you have to have the ship repaired and it has to be ready to launch in order to get off the planet. Everyone receives a player board, and here you'll be managing the characters that you play throughout the game. Also, this is where your secret objective is, and will help lead you through the rounds and so forth. But on the back, what's interesting here, definitely something to look at right up front when we take a look at our objective cards that get dealt out. Now, either you're an astronaut, you're a guardian, or you're the alien. Astronauts are simply trying to repair the ship and get off planet. Alien is trying to hijack the bodies, so to say, of one of the humans and get on board with the astronauts and escape with them and wreak havoc throughout the galaxy. Or you're the guardian who's like, nope, no one is getting off this planet. I'm stopping everyone so the aliens never escape. So those objective cards are dealt out to each player. Definitely get a chance to take a look at it, read the requirements of your role for that particular game. And obviously, if you're the astronauts, you're trying to find each other and work together. Definitely that vibe where you have that traitor in your midst, but you're not sure who is who. So there were three phases to every round. This first phase is the control phase, and you, as the first player or the protagonist, will take that card and put it on your player board. Then you're gonna collect all the character cards. You're gonna shuffle them up, and the player to your right is going to draw one card at random. That becomes kind of an NPC. That character will still activate its special ability, but no one will be controlling it for this round. Then you, as the protagonist, is going to look at the cards, choose one, and put it face down into your character slot. And then every player in turn will do the same. Then all players will flip over their cards simultaneously, revealing their character for this round. You'll also be taking a marker. Now, what's interesting about these markers is it will give you a track record, so to say, of which characters you've played during this game, which ones you've played the most, and which ones you've played the least. And the thing here is that at the end of the game, when you get your final character to hopefully win with, well, the character you've played the least 
is going to be the one that you acquire. So it's an interesting balancing act as you grab these decks and these different characters and manipulate them for good or for bad, depending on what type of objective you currently have. And you'll make sure to grab the deck of cards that corresponds with your character. Now, we move to phase two, which is the operations phase. This is where you're gonna be playing those cards that you have. So they're gonna be doing all kinds of different things, but each of the characters is going to activate in initiative order, one through six. And any characters that are not held by a player, their special abilities will still activate. So you wanna keep an eye on that as you move through the game. But you're gonna be playing these cards from your hand. And the first one you're playing, you have to do this in order, is you're going to be moving. You're going to be placing yourself in a location that will help you augment the deck in a way that's either bolstering it or weakening it, depending on what you want to do with this character. And so movement is key in this game, and you really have to be careful about spinning those cards because it can be quite expensive to move from one side to the other. So as you progress through the game, you hope that the characters have lots of movement available. But moving into an area, and definitely the areas within a section of the board are gonna do various things. Like the decompression chamber will give you the ability to move the countdown clock up or down. So depending on what objective you have, will really modify or dictate how you're going to manipulate the different areas of the board. Next, you're gonna be playing search cards. Search card is going to allow you to manipulate the decks in the area that you're located. You'll take however many cards it calls for and you'll stack the deck basically. You can put these in any order you see fit at the top. And then you'll draw the first card and put it in your hand. But if you have any get cards in your hand, then you can continue to draw from that deck and put them in your hand. Also, if you're in the right locations, you can play repair cards and then attack cards. Repair cards, obviously you're gonna repair the ship and attack is going to lessen the threat. And keep in mind, as you play these cards, some of them might have effects at the bottom of the card. You want to make sure you take advantage of those different effects as well. So each player will activate all their cards and finish out their turn. And then we move to phase three, messages from the shadows. So in this final phase of the round, all players will gather the cards that they played and they will secretly choose one to place under the yellow hand at the bottom of the board. This is the messages from the shadows. Then you as the protagonist will take the white hand and yellow hand, mix them together, shuffle them up, draw the top six. Now you're looking for icons. Icons are going to manipulate the threat level, the repair level, and the launch level. You'll play these cards and manipulate the dials accordingly. And then into the round cleanup is just gathering up the characters, putting them back to the side of the board with their new fresh deck of cards, hoping that you've either weakened or bolstered that deck for other players to deal with in the next round. And then finally, at the end of the game, if you've achieved one of the three dials, the threat level's maxed, or you've repaired, or you've launched, then you will get your final character of the game. And that's dictated by which character you use the least. And then those cards that you get in hand can allow you to mess with these dials even further. Again, being mindful of the icons that the dial and your cards call for. Might allow you to max out the threat level or lessen it and so forth. Or maybe you did not repair the ship, there's enough cards to damage it, and the Guardian wins keeping everyone on the planet and keeping the galaxy safe from the alien. All right, folks, just a reminder once again, this has been a Dice Tower paid preview, and everything you've seen here has been in prototype form. So keep a close eye on the campaign for any changes that still may occur. Now, with that said, you know, there's some really interesting back and forth in this game as there's a lot of intrigue, trying to figure out who's your friends and who might be the alien or the guardian. And I really like the guardian aspect of this game, trying to keep everybody on the planet, trying to keep the galaxy safe from the alien. Really interesting playing that role. I really enjoyed it. But folks, ultimately, if this looks like something that would be of interest to you, I'm sure they'd appreciate your support. So I think that's it for me. And until next time, we'll see you at the table.